I've arrived to be greeted by a big concrete wall and a big timber door. And I just can't wait to see what's on the other side. Oh, this is nice, Stephen. Yeah, so here we are. This is the entry, Reno. It's surprisingly warm in here. I'm not going to need my jacket, am I? No, that's right. Well, these walls are 400 millimetres thick, uh, cast in place concrete with 100 millimetres of insulation. So it's very stable temperature. Oh, wow. This is an absolutely beautiful living space. This is the centre point of the house in a lot of ways. Bushy and Danny were keen to have a point right here that could survey the whole house. People arriving, kids playing. The kitchen, the main heart of the house, I can see is here. And it's divided into two sections. So we've got a little bit of a back butler's pantry there, which That's is right. almost a second kitchen. Yeah, Bushy and Danny were very keen to have the ability to run the kitchen from behind the scenes, but also be able to run the kitchen from front of house. Stephen, I'm noticing the obvious difference in the concrete from what we see on the kitchen bench to the walls and the ceiling. That was a deliberate strategy to create a contrast between uh, the concrete that you touch, which is super smooth, mm. and the concrete that you look at. Tell me about the space here. It seems quite cleverly zoned. Well, it's a classic uh, open plan uh, Reno. Kitchen, dining, living. Uh, but just with a slight variation here with a fireplace sitting on this concrete bench uh, that just creates a little bit of separation. There's got to be something behind this wall. There's a separate space at the end there. You can do anything from watching a movie, reading a book or listening to music. There are timber doors that slide out and just isolate that space completely. There's no space wasted. Everything seems to be used. Yeah, that's right. It's actually you know, quite a compact and fully used plan. So Stephen, we've gone from the uh, concrete box on the inside where we were warm and quiet to the cold and noise of the outdoor environment here. The reason I wanted to bring you out here was to just to show you that, that duality between the fragile timber and then the monolithic concrete. I mean, you say it's fragile, but I assume there's quite a lot of strength in that yeah. timber box, isn't there? Hidden in there is some uh, substantial steel structure. Hence the cantilever. This is a bedroom suite, bathroom, bedroom, all in one, steam room upstairs, and then bedroom, bathroom downstairs. Oh, it's the bathroom. I was looking for the bedroom. Reno. Oh, oh Danny. <laughs> Good. Hi, Reno. No, you have walked into our bedroom. Yes, it's the bathroom, but beyond the vanity, we have our bedroom over there. This was inspired by a trip we went to Bhutan and we, after a long day's walk, we arrived at the hotel and we walked in bathroom, but beyond the bathroom is the bedroom and then beyond the bedroom is the grand view. So this is really the uh, hero shot of the place where we can see this majestic view. This is the only place in the whole house where we actually have a view as such. We could have opened up this view to the suburbs beyond, but we really just wanted to picture this space and this view out here. Stephen, now this is a lovely surprise. I didn't know what to expect from the other side of the wall there. And I love the contrast between the timber and the concrete. Yeah, you do see it very clearly here, Reno. And I love how you can see straight through the house onto the National Park there. Stephen. Yeah, that's right. And Ushi and Danny were very keen on, on being able to see that, that view through the house uh, and just picking up that the rolling moon is rolling across the dunes. This is just wonderful space. We've got this outdoor area, which is often full of children screaming and in the, in the pool and bouncing on the trampoline. And we love just being able to hop in the car and come down here and we've escaped everything in between. And we just come down here and this is our little getaway. What I like about this property is the way the contrast of concrete and timber reflects the owner's dual lifestyle of country and city living. The architecture stands strong against the brutal elements, whilst always maintaining an even stronger sense of calm, warmth and privacy. If I was to describe something as having full flavour, a bit of body, taste and a very rarefied and dignified palate, 
I might be talking about wine, but no, equally I could be talking about this building. It's the Shaw Winery, the cellar door just outside of Canberra, and I've been told it's a building that needs to be sipped slowly to reveal its full potential. Creating architecture, I suppose, is a little bit like, you know, creating a fine wine. You have to have years of experience. Nick here, you were faced with one of those dilemmas where the view was one side, the light was on the other. Yep. You had to make something beautiful. How did you unlock the flavour, the concept behind the design? Well, it was really making a, um, a call in terms of what's more important. And the most important thing was really to um, celebrate the view. It's a cellar door, so what we needed to celebrate is the wine, which you can see on the southern side, the vineyards. Mm -hmm. We had a building that, that basically had two halves. It had one half on this side that had the views to the south, which, which you see. And it had another half where you had storage and those sort of things. The existing cellar door was in the background as well. And what we wanted to do was basically forget about the past, look into the future. So we're coming from the past into the future and then celebrating this, this view that we've got on the uh, southern side with a really simple building. And the key for unlocking the design really was this central, very strong concrete spine. Absolutely. The concrete spine was something that introduced a very simple material, a very robust material, similar to wine. It's very simple ingredients at the end of the day. It's, it's grapes. So the, the materials that made up the building was very simple. And how many red wines did you go through coming up with this? Oh, look, I'd rather not say. If you want to create interest in architecture, you can start off with simple forms, an oblong, a square, but by creating some sort of wedge, some sort of angle, you create all these dynamic spaces which helps you move through a space. And the wedge here, Dean, that was critical to create all of these beautiful sensations. It certainly was better. Um, the idea of that was to lead us through uh, pinch points within the building. So we, we are in this vast entry. But as you dissect through the concrete wedge, the scale comes down and then it points you out into uh, the tasting area, into the vista beyond. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a subtle architectural trick to, to guide you through this building. It certainly is, yes. Mm. Limited palette, yep. concrete though the key. It is, it is the key and it's what the client wanted. It's an off-white uh, concrete. It's, I think, 250 cubes in 18 individual pours over six months. Yeah, right. So you're now an expert in concrete as well. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, <laughs> but yes, I know a little bit about it. Now, architects, they like to have a bit of a, you know, downtime, long lunches. Was there plenty of long lunches here? Uh, there has been. I've been out here a few times since, so uh, um, many wines have been enjoyed. We've spoken about how good planning can guide you through a building. This is the end of the concrete wedge, and here we descend down to a subterranean level, which is lit by something quite extraordinary. This space has got a real ecclesiastical feel, but instead of a stained glass window, take a look at that. It's 750 individual wine glasses put together by the sculptors Christy Rea and Peter Nielsen. Instead of turning water into wine, they've turned wine into light, and it leads to somewhere truly extraordinary. I think it's that time of the day. Nice. How did I know I was gonna end up with a wine in my hand? <laughs> but a Riesling and a Shiraz. Yeah, right. Now this is, this is a very special space for you, isn't it? Tell us. About 12 months nearly to the day that uh, I flew out and surprised my partner Lizzie and proposed just over there. And like enough, she said yes. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Fantastic Thank you. architecture Thank you. inspired by some great memories. It is wonderful. Thank you. Angelo, how do you design a building to fit so differently into this kind of environment? Well, the first thing I think we do is to try not to do something that stands out, actually. Oh. Um, what we try and do is work with what's here and try and weave something into the environment out of the things that already exist. So it's a real contextual study of sure. what's going on around sure. it. And there are things that are worthwhile to consider and there are things that are not. And so the most important thing is to be a good judge. It's about looking at what people love and trying to offer it back to them. Jill, I hope you like what we've done because here it is. Ah. I 
really like the raw concrete. With concrete comes the vulnerability of it being too boring in a sense. And we want to make things that are not just concrete. They have form and they have shadow. So the materials we use are the material that you see, but then there's all the shadow and the light that hits it. Well, I notice as you walk past the building that it actually shifts. It's got quite a lot of movement in the facade. I thought it would be beautiful to have triangle screens. The triangles offer uh, a, an illusion that you can see much more than you actually can. There's always a struggle as to what you offer. We try and offer as much as we can everywhere. And uh, bike racks, a beautiful entry, um, composed areas that enable people to kind of think that, yep, they're coming home. Angelo, it's really unusual to step into an environment like this, which is no applied finished. It's all concrete. It's really, you know, raw. Well, that has a lot to do with the client brief and how they uh, brought uh, an idea to us, which was to try and create something that had an integrity from the beginning to the end. Concrete is one theme, but there are other themes that have integrity in this development. One is landscape, or understanding of the relationship between urban life and landscape. There's nothing worse than walking through a hermetically sealed environment to get to your home. And there's something rather beautiful about seeing your home through a garden. We wanted it to be very much a collaborative process and to see what Angelo would bring to it. Obviously, you know, Angelo is a very talented architect and we wanted to um, give him the opportunity to come up with something quite unique, which he has. I really love the touch of the edible gardens that you've put on the roof here. This is a, a place that's obviously for the whole community of the building. That was a really important aspect for us of the building. It was having a beautiful communal area and having a space, not only to get outside and get some sunshine, but as a, a space where people can kind of meet their neighbours and have that real sense of community in the building. What we did uh, was work closely together to create a collaboration that gives you what you saw today. The client was a supporter of us and we were a supporter of the client as well. The developers here could have just done something ordinary, but instead they've chosen to back good design. 